Hey guys, welcome back. This is Brent with Lincoln's Motorsports. This is Mark's uh, small block Ford road race motor with the tunnel port heads. I just got our thrust plate on. Um, I had to take it off and adjust it for thrust clearance. We had one thousandth and uh, <laughs> that's not going to cut it. So now we have uh, about five, um, which is four or five is usually like where I like to see the, the cam thrust on these motors um we're looking we see our cam dowel in there it's not too far back it's not protruding that's good this cam core takes a 7 16 20 cam bolt so uh, those are available through arp if you know where to look and uh, they look something like this inch and a half long then you get a big fat hardened arp washer you never know what you're going to get with aftermarket cams, so I try to keep a plethora of cam bolts laying around. So I want to get um, some Loctite on this puppy and torque it down and recheck our cam clearance, thrust, thrust clearance, and then we can get on to degree in the cam. Got our torque wrench set at 70 pound feet. Uh, since it's a 7 16 bolt and a steel cam, all right. So you can see our dial indicator there. So it's easy if you want to just grab. Uh, your screwdriver on each side of a lobe gently and remember we're not trying to deflect anything we're just trying to take the free play out so five thousandths on the cam in play all right so you may be asking why did you take the time to lock tight all of that when you haven't degreed the cam in yet that's a valid question basically i'm gambling and um the majority of the time the cams come in right where they're supposed to be and i don't have to touch them so um i'm, I'm basically taking a chance that everything's going to be okay and if it is then uh, i've already eliminated some steps and got them out of the way let me get my cam degree wheel set up and we'll uh we'll degree the cam all right if you're wondering how to, to wondering how to degree a cam um, i did a video last week so you can dip back and, and watch that, I'm not gonna show everything, but I started that video out with saying, if your top dead center on your degree wheel is not set correctly, then the rest of it's gonna be junk. So here's, uh, we got 16 degrees one way. Sixteen degrees the other way. So my piston stops come with a with a little stop if you got a disc piston. But since uh, these pistons are dome, they stick out, and I just use the piston stop itself, uh, the bar itself, to to give me a positive stop. So now that I know that our uh, top dead center is configured correctly, then I can get the rest of my setup uh, done almost there and i like to use the exact same lifters that i'm going to use with the engine to degree the cam with so we've got these um ppp uh tool steel dlc coated lifters we'll slide those in there and uh, get our dial indicator set up then we'll start degreeing all right, so we're on the intake lifter. We're gonna do the intake center line method. I've got it zeroed so we can check our lobe lift. Okay. 
this extension on my dial indicator does not like the push rod seat in the lifter so it's just really touchy there's one two three we should have 372 thousandths per the cam card 60 70 two all right so i'm going to zero it there because we're at the peak of the lobe i'm going to go back to 50. So we're going 50 thousandths down the lobe. All right, look at the degree wheel. We're at 69 degrees. I'm gonna go opposite direction to zero. It should go to zero and then continue on. And we're gonna stop at 50. All right, so 69 and 158 and a half. Alright, when I divide that by two, we're at 113.75. So, of course, after I just got through telling you guys that uh, I was on a lot tight everything because I was confident that it was all going to come in the way that it should, we should be on a 107 intake center line. So, we're about six degrees retarded, and I'll have to fix that. But uh, for all intents and purposes, we'll continue on like this because I want to show you guys something. Um, if you remember, we were at 69 and 158 and a half. Somebody in the comment section asked why I don't go all the way back to 100 um, when I use the intake center line method. So we'll see the difference right here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through all this again, and then you can see the difference. Okay, there's zero. All right, I'm gonna go all the way back 100. Or thereabouts, and then forward to 50. If you remember, the first number was 69. And here we are again at 69. So if you've got a good, solid timing chain set, it doesn't make any difference. Um, and when you go to zero, the way that I do it with the peak lift and then back up, you've got all this um, motion here to redirect the timing chain set. And then you've got all the motion going back the opposite way to redirect the timing chain, timing chain set. So we are six degrees retarded and I'll have to pull all this back apart and advance the cam by six degrees. All right, All right so um, what I've done behind the scenes is I uh, originally told you that I was gonna advance at six degrees, but we ended up having to go eight degrees. And uh, I'm gonna go through the two different ways of degree in the cam just to show you why. So we're gonna go on down to um, where that exhaust lifter is coming up and I'm gonna zero my dial indicator. And here we go again, we're gonna go to peak lobe lift. One, two, three, 72, we're gonna zero. All right, then we're gonna back up to 50. So, if you look here, it's at 61 degrees. I know from the camera angle, you probably can't see that well. I'll we'll try to get right, right there, 61. Then we're gonna go back to the dial indicator. To zero, we're gonna stop it at 50. And then we are at 151. So I'm gonna go 61 and 151. So by this, by the intake center line method, we are on a 106 intake center line. So let's do it by the event method. 
And just so you know, these lobes are asymmetrical. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our dial indicator. I'm gonna wait for that exhaust lifter to come up so I know my intake lifter is on the base circle of the cam. We're gonna zero the dial indicator. Okay, so the opening, the intake valve open event at 50,000 should be 21 degrees. So we're gonna go here. We're gonna stop it at 50. And we're gonna look at our degree wheel. 21. All right, I'm gonna keep on going. There's one, two, three, 72, three, two, one, and I'm gonna stop it at 50. And the cam card says we should be at 55 degrees. So we look at the black numbers. We are, you can't hardly see it from the angle here, but from where I'm sitting, it's 55 degrees. So once again, with an asymmetrical lobe, I've proven that the valve event method is more accurate than the intake center line method. So we're gonna hop over to our exhaust lifter. We're gonna do the exact same thing, just to double check it. All right, so we're set up on our exhaust side now and that intake lifter is going down and I got my dial indicator zeroed. We're gonna check the lobe lift. There's one, two, three, 50, 60, 70, one, two, three, four, and some change. So it's supposed to be 375. We got short at about a half a thousand, but that's okay. Um, so I'm gonna go all the way back down and we're gonna go, we're gonna check this is the valve event method. We're gonna check that 50 thousandths valve opening. All right, so our cam card says we should open the exhaust valve at 65 and a half degrees. We are at 66 degrees, so a half a degree off. I can't really do much about a half a degree off. We're gonna check the exhaust valve closing event. There's 375, three, two, one. We're gonna stop it at 50. And the cam card says that we should be at 23 and a half degrees and we are at 23. So there again, half degree off on the exhaust side. Now, if you want to see what the um, exhaust center line method, what that looks like, we can do that. We're going to, at zero, one, two, three. We're going to stop at peak lift, which is 374. We're going to zero it. And then we're going to go back 50 thousandths because we're on the top of the hill, or I'm sorry, the top of the lobe. We're going down one side and we are at 160 on the money and it's going to go to zero and then it's going to start down the other side of the hill and we're going to stop it at 50. all right then we're going to look at our degree wheel so it says 63 degrees so we are 160 plus 63 divided by two. All right, it says the exhaust center line is a 111.5. That's the filthiest string I've ever seen there. Oh, wow. All right, um, and if you remember, our intake center line was at 106. Now, if I divide those numbers into I should get theoretical lobe separation angle, which is 108.75. The lobe separation angle of this cam is 109. So it's actually 
not as far off as some of the cams I've seen, but it is far enough off that the valve event method showed uh, to be the most accurate. All right, so we finally get to put Loctite on for good. And get this cam bolt torqued. So you, from the video the other day, you remember me telling you that sometimes I have to go almost eight degrees advanced to degree a cam. Just think of uh, you guys who are putting this in without degree in. So if you were to install this cam at home and you didn't degree it, it would have been eight degrees retarded, which would have been very noticeable on uh, how your engine will behave. It could be very sluggish, could have no power whatsoever. So this is why we degree cams. And it's not necessarily a cam's fault. Could be a combination of the cam, the timing set, and the crankshaft. So we've got our torque wrench set at 70 again. I'm gonna give this cam bolt a good torque. All right. 